and welcome to episode 20 of the On a Family Basis podcast. My name is Jake. I'm Dallas. And I'm Ben. And we are actually pre-recording this episode because I'm actually out of town. As we speak, I'm currently in LA. So I'm not uh, at the office, if you will. Jake's got a so what, movie audition. Yeah, that's it. Just looking for any role that yeah. they want someone in the wheelchair. A literal okay. role. A role, if you will. Who? A role? A role and role. A roll and roll, 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 that's what they call it. In the business. Right, so I thought. In the, in the business. All right. So I thought we'd just answer a couple of questions. Just getting to know us. If you are listening or watching and you don't know us, uh, you know, not well, I thought what we do is just ask these five questions and uh, you can get to know us a little bit more. So the first question is, uh, who is your, who was your favorite baseball player growing up? Ben, who was your favorite player growing up? All right, so I, I have a couple, and no, that's not how the game works. So my number one will be <laughs> Jeff Bagwell. I always loved yeah. Jeff Bagwell. That batting stance, he had the chin beard. He was dope, and he was an incredible player. So Bags was my guy. As I got older, um, it was Jeter, probably. I respected you know Jeter's game. And then all time is Jackie, which I've said you know in, in multiple – episodes already um yep. how important he was and everything so the, the real answer would be jackie but for the sake of growing up i would say jeff bagwell Dust, who was your favorite player growing up growing up uh my favorite player was no more garcia par mm. yeah i think like yeah i remember that yeah no um, i just liked him i honestly really didn't have a great reason for it i just thought he was Is fun it- is it true, Dell, that when you're scrubbing in to go to the operating room and stuff, you do the thing with your gloves, your medical gloves that he did with his batting gloves? Yeah, I actually have special gloves where there's Velcro at the top. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that would just contaminate you all over again. A little bit. Oh, it wouldn't be great, yeah. No, not the best. You, you know, as, as, as I was growing up, I, you know, for, for a while, I was a, a pitcher, and my favorite uh, players were just Cubs pitchers, and uh, the first one I remember was Kerry Wood. Very hard to forget that as they're growing Absolutely. up, having 20 strikeouts in one game. But Damn. then as, as it was getting to 2003, it was Mark Pryor. Yeah. Mark Pryor for that. For the very short window, Mark Pryor, if you don't know him, Lights just up. look up those highlights from like that year. 2003, Mark Pryor mm-hmm. was just insane. I, I just loved him, loved watching him play, all that stuff. So, you were a big, uh, were a big Glendon Rush fan back in the day, too. <laughs> you mean Glenn Allen? Glenn Allen. No, Glendon Rush. <laughs> you you don't remember idea. Glendon Rush, the old shitty lefty? Oh, dude, he was terrible. Anyways, go ahead. Go. Exactly. I became a huge Albert Pujols fan after seeing him uh, in his first home run derby. Huge. Up. I love Albert Pujols. That, like, on and off the field, like, he's just an, he's an upstanding guy. You should have been around for our last uh, our last conversation. That was great. <laughs> Whoops. So we're real quick. We didn't. We're not supposed to talk about it, but let's talk about it here. So Dallas, what do you think? Does Elder Pujols? He's nineteen home runs away from seven hundred. Does he hit nineteen more this year? Yeah, I think he'll hit nineteen this year. Just sure. a fanboy. I'm just just gonna that, get. That I mean, it's right. provided provided that he stays healthy, of course. But like they've got the DH role now, so I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to step in and stay off the field. Yeah. So, Dude, 19 home sure. runs is a lot of home runs, though. Come on. Yeah, but so so was 700. So, yeah, and yeah. most of those were hit before he was 40 years old. Yeah. Or he's like little, 60. Yeah. He's a little elderly. I think he, but I was just thinking this uh, earlier today, actually. I think he's going to be in the, like, in some capacity, he'll be in the league for an, a while. He's going to be a hitting coach. Like, I think he's already, like, helping out the younger bats um, on yeah. the cards. Like, he's going to be in some facet <clears throat> part of baseball. And um, yeah. like I said, off the field, man, like he's 
his his works with um with Down syndrome community and yeah. uh, he has a, just, his child, right? Isn't one of his yeah. kids? That yeah, his kids have Down his, syndrome. I think his well. daughter. One of I think yeah. his daughter does. And um, so like his work um in that community and like also just like um just giving uh he's just a he donates a ton of money and like he in his time he's just an uh, good individual, I think. good a, good 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 yeah yeah all right so kind of connected to our favorite players growing up do we have a separate can we just all agree that our favorite baseball moment maybe of all time was 2016, 2016 cubs can we just say that? 11.02. Chris Bryant feeling that ground ball? Yeah, that was... That, that looked those, like it, hands was, up. it was going up. Dude, he started to slip. He started to slip at the end of that throw. I They replayed it on MLB Network not that long ago. Oh, what a crazy game. I knew what was happening, obviously, because it's five years old at that point. But I was still nervous. I was like... Yes. This ball, like Dexter's home run, the lead off the game. I was like, that's not actually going to get out. You know, Rajay's going to catch it. <laughs> or, you know, I was like, no, Chapman's not possibly going to give up this home run. It's just crazy. You like, can't he, watch that game without <clears throat> David yeah. Ross. David Ross is not going to hit a home run. Right. Right. Yeah, dude. That's and crazy. I mean, there was just so much. And then Madden pulling Hendricks early. And you know, going to the bullpen too early and all that other stuff. And it did yeah. that game was just it's nuts to watch to this day. Yes. Yeah. Like Dallas said, you still get goosebumps. It's great. But yeah, so the uh, game seven in, in sixteen is probably number one. Yeah. Yeah, easy. So you know what? Let's actually move. The last three questions are going to be not about baseball. So first one, number so question number three is what is your favorite movie? Or what's the most watched movie by you? So Dallas Wanter actually starts off. What's your favorite or what's the most watched movie of all time by you? Favorite movie most, is the most watched. Most watched, not the same. A saving Silverman every <laughs> night before bed for three straight years on the PlayStation uh, 2. On the PS2. Yeah. Dude, that PS2 <laughs> had some hours clocked in. Um, but Gladiator, 100% number one movie. Still, okay. to this day. Are you gonna watch? Are you gonna, are you gonna watch Gladiator Two when it comes out? Yeah, I'll try it out. My wait, 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 wait! Yeah. They're making one. Yeah. yeah, Ridley Scott's making it. He's gonna focus on somebody. Thomas. Russell Crowe will be in it, Thomas, but he's not. But, uh, Russell Crowe's not in it though. No, he's in it a little bit. Like I think flashback scenes and that kind of stuff. Yikes! Because uh, he doesn't have the build as he yeah, did yikes. 25 years ago when that movie came out. Uh, maybe yikes. he came out of the sequel. Uh, That's like asking Gerard Butler to get back in like 300. 300 shape. shape. Like yeah, just do We're punches make for here till forever. <laughs> it's called yes, the 600. Did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Twice as many Spartans. <laughs> All right, so Ben, uh, so you you said Gladiator. What's your so Ben? I maybe that's your most watched film, Saving Silverman. What's your favorite movie? No, my most watched film is definitely not Saving Silverman. Um, my favorite, well, my favorite movie of all time is The Godfather Part Two, Mm. which I will say to this day is the greatest movie ever made. Um, it is. It's spectacular on all levels, storytelling, character development. I mean, you see the dynamics of how the family gets built and how everything plays out with Michael through the second yeah. film. They shouldn't have made a third one. I think that's, you know, obvious at this point. Third one is so renowned for being disliked. That Only because people are a, a fan frame. of the other two. Yeah, well, that too. And people are, who are a fan of the other two are just like, yeah. We don't count the third one. Right. <laughs> like you just stick it over here. It was just a different movie. But um, what's new, the second one, you didn't need to see the first one. And that's what I think makes it its own thing. It's yeah. The first one is obviously so, so fantastic in its own right. I actually just listened to the audiobooks. I like to listen to a lot of audiobooks while I'm just doing stuff around the house. And I listened to the Godfather uh, audiobooks. They're mm-hmm. like nine hours each on YouTube. You can find them. Oh. Um, but it's just ba- it's perfect background noise. But you get so much more. Like the movies do such a great job of going into character and all that. But then obviously you know how books are even more rich with detail and stuff. So it really does provide like a different way of viewing the movies. 
so that when I do watch the movies next, I can have a little bit more appreciation and different appreciation for certain sure. characters based on that sort of stuff. But so the Godfather two is easily my favorite movie. And then my most watched movie has to be something ridiculously bad that we would have watched. probably Step Brothers, which obviously mm-hmm. none of us think is a bad movie, but it's also not Godfather two, you know, but it's definitely a movie I've seen a ton. So, yeah. yeah. So I'll say this. So I, I don't even know if it's my most watched, but oh, whatever. All right. So my most watched is probably Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds. Classic. That movie is, it's funny every single time. Every what ham did you smack? Not the ham I just bought. Not the ham I just bought. <laughs> She said, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah, I, I, almost I can recite the movie. It's that it's it's that iconic. But I would say my favorite movie, and it's not just because it's baseball, baseball, but it's because it's about a certain position in baseball. So, Bull Durham is my favorite movie, and that's because it centers around a pitcher and a catcher mostly. And when I was watching, I was a catcher. I just loved it. I love the dynamics and all that. Um, Isn't it crazy that uh, Major League is such a better movie than Bull Durham? Like it's get, wild. Get, get all right now. You're you're gone. <laughs> like it's but crazy how much we're better good, Major we're League. Good. You? I'm. I just muted Ben. So all right. So next one is what is our favorite album of all time not most listened to but what is the what is your favorite album or what's one album you would listen to if you if you had to pick one a desert island album Dad, you want to go first you want me to go Jay, no, you, you, go you, ahead. You, you can go in I, first. I, yeah i can go, for go. It. all right so this i listen to music all pretty much music and podcasts almost all day so but there's one album for some reason it just is never is never bad and that it it comes from a uh paramore but it's not one of their earlier albums it's their last album their most recent album after laughter that album is a great it's just always fun to listen to. And my six-year-old actually liked it when she was three and still likes it. So I'll, I'll pick that one. That's a good one to pick one. Dow? Go, Ben. All right, so that's tough. I've, I've gone through so many different, uh, we'll call it phases, that, uh, of music that I listen to. Yeah. You know, I went through that angsty like Limp Biscuit is everything. <laughs> 1998, you remember oh Rolling and, and The Undertaker, and it was it was a way of life. Nookie, yeah. that whole thing, right? <clears throat> Realistically, if I was to pick one album, start to finish, Desert Island, it would be between two, and they came out right around the same time. They're also two of the first albums I ever bought. So the first being College Dropout by Kanye West. Mm, mm, mm. Second being Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've said this multiple times. We might have even talked about it on the podcast. But yeah, if I'm driving anywhere that's over an hour, "Get Rich or Die Trying" is in circulation because I know every lyric except for the bad words. Sure, and I sure. will sing along every word, album you know, word for word in that entire album, front to back. And it's like in the easiest one hour, and it gets you buck for traffic. You know what I mean? They got 50 cent. Many men wish death upon me, you know? And I feel like all these drivers, they're driving terrible. They're trying to kill me. I don't know what accent that was, but it was great. <laughs> it was great. No, but 50 cent, get Richard Die trying or uh, College Shop are, are, are my two. And then the Menzingers are in a, a, a band that I listen to now. They're a punk rock band. They're number ben, one. Right ben, you're, you're always picking like three or four. I know. You got to pick, pick one. I do not want Just one. Fine. If gun to my head, I have to pick one college shop out. All right. And Dallas, what is one? What's one album, your favorite album of all time? That's hard. Um, Yeah. Supposed to be hard. 
Jake doesn't ask easy questions. Oh, I would, yeah. I, if I had a guess, it would be something by Usher. Or mm, maybe yeah. a member of the East Side Boys. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, might be. The Yin Yang Twins. Usher's Confessions was good. Um, <laughs> but actually, Khalid's American Teen is really good, too. I like that. Hmm. Which one? Not. American Teen. Uh, By who? Khalid. By who? Khalid. You've definitely heard like some of the songs. You just DJ look Khaled? <laughs> no. Um, just, Justin Bieber? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sick. The Biebs? Just, it's just another, a different R&B artist. Um, but yeah, like Confessions by Usher is fantastic. Um, you, you gotta pick one. I'd probably Jake, just, Jake, Jake, I, because I've heard one. Usher so much, I'd probably just go with Khalid's then. Hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, and that's just so that's such a difficult one because I. It just depends on your yet. mood. Your mood has so much to do with what you're listening to at the time. Right, but yeah. I mean, if you I'm know? stuck on an island, island like Khalid, like if you listen to Ooh. some of the the album, like you'll you'll be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like it's it's chill. It's like very chill R and B, like more. Uh, so I think I think this is a different question then. So if we have a desert desert island album, I might pick Abba's greatest hits, which oh, are great. What? You can't be picking greatest hits. That's true. Right. There's like, there's that's like not, Johnny Cash's greatest hits. That's like picking, hits. nah, that's like picking right. Elton John's greatest hits and not one of his albums. Like, you, got, yeah, you can't be doing it. Fine, yeah, take man. off your pants and jacket by Blink 182. All right, there you go. That, that was a very hard I thought you were asking me to from... do that. I was like, <laughs> it's the wrong Dude, choice. On, it's, two, it's 2000 humor. That's what you do. You take off your pants Con and jacket. You went from Kanye to Blink. College Dropout is the best Kanye second. album and the last good one. Sorry. That's absolutely not true. He had like five good albums. Sticking with it. That. Sticking with it. Anyways, All right. Jake, go ahead. All right. <laughs> last, last question is, what is your favorite book of all time? Is my so, answer supposed to be the Holy Bible? <laughs> can it be? I feel like that's what everybody says. Like when they're like, no. what's the most inspirational well, read? And I'm like, no, because I'm no, how, my how space and this? Facebook, people always put the Bible down. You're like, all right, nobody okay. barely anybody's read that from back. Okay. Who's honestly who's read it start to finish? That's tough. Jake, you might have. I, know. I, was, gonna Jake. Say, I was gonna say one of us definitely. This man. I'd say, yeah. I mean, it's only been a couple of a couple times, but um <clears> no, so favorite book so outside of you know any religious text or anything for school or whatever it might i'm not saying that would be a choice or a pick but let's just say a novel or a what anything else pretty much um uh yeah why don't we start in there so ben do you have that favorite book offhand da vinci code it's my favorite book I read it for the first time while I was in military school. Uh, it was the first book that I remember reading. Like, I, it was the first book that I remember I couldn't put down. You know what I mean? Where you just, you, you, I have to keep reading to find out what happens next and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then since I've owned and read every Dan Brown book that's come out after. So it's obviously had a very big impression on me. Um, so yeah, The Da Vinci yeah. Code is probably my favorite book. Dallas, what would you say? What's your favorite book? So Dan, uh, the Da Vinci Code is probably the first thing that I read from front to cover, honestly, like in my entire life. It's probably the first. Like outside of school projects, you mean, I hope? Because at that point, you were in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even read To Kill a Mockingbird before that. I, I can I can honestly say I've never read that whole thing. Really? It's so yeah. good. How have you not? I've read some Sorry. of it because I was told to. If somebody it's my wife. To she's it, sitting right here. It's her favorite book. Good for her. I'm just Ooh. saying I haven't read it. Like I'm just saying. You should. It's like it's like a hundred pages, dude. I read what I was supposed to read, and then I stopped because they kept telling me to read it. So I'm like, I don't want to do it anymore. So, so I'll quick thing, things. quick thing, from grade five to freshman year of college, I never read one book all the way through. See, and school books, I never read one of them. Not one. I really? would do everything in my power no. to do anything other than read the book. So that was your vacuuming. 
Yes. Your guys not <laughs> reading books was your vacuum. Like, um, what's the one book in high school that you were supposed to read for like history? Catcher in was... Rye? No, I didn't read that. Um, I know you didn't. I don't even know why I asked. What was what's the it like? It takes men? place. It takes place in Chicago. I know the premise of the book. It's like it's a. It takes place in Chicago. Yeah, it's like um, it's a it's about like the social structure and like how like I don't know like uh, cleanliness and stuff. I don't know like there were pigs. Fahrenheit four fifty one. Oh. What? Pigs? Yeah, you know, like uh, slaughterhouses. It was about slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouse Five is not. It doesn't have anything to do with <laughs> Chicago. I don't. I've never. That's like that. set in on Tralfamadorian, which is like a main uh, what's it planet, called? No. And then in Poland. I would say yeah, though. Yeah, I was going to. Want you look gone, gone tomorrow. That's that's something that I did read. I I, I like uh, murder mysteries. Uh, Lee Child, Gone Tomorrow, Jack Reacher. Okay. Have you read any of the Agatha Christie books, like no. Murder on the Orient Express or anything like that? Nah. Oh, those are fantastic murder mysteries. I'm telling you guys, I listen to audio books a lot. I'm currently listening to Dracula. And if you get a good audio book, dude, the guy like he he changes his voices for each character and stuff. My imagination just goes wild. Like I'm picturing the jungle. all of this. Uh, huh? That's the book. Sorry, the jungle. Jungle Never book. Read. The jungle, mother. Do <laughs> you guys remember reading Hatchet about the kid who gets yeah. lost in the woods? And I'm going to I'm kill gonna read it. Hatchet. I've never read a book for school. <laughs> what about The Giver? Everyone read no. The Giver. No. Didn't read it. it I know what it's about. It's Never read it. Great. Man, you guys are slipping. You guys should all go right. now that you're adults and not in school. You guys should go back and listen to, no. and read, read all of the old grade school books you're supposed to read. I'm I'll talking read. Dr. Seuss. I'm talking Cat in the Hat. I'm talking. If all Kendra of and I have kids. I'll read them. I'll read it with them or have them yeah. giving the Spark Notes we, versions. We made it this far, okay? We don't <laughs> yeah. need those books, okay? No. So you know what? I've read one of my favorite things to do. I, I you know. Since I've had a kid, being able to read is very hard. Reading comic books is so much easier. Reading you can read one issue in like fifteen yeah, pictures. minutes. It's right, great. pictures always right. Like, yeah, no, but you know the it was there was a one week period where I was pulling all nighters to because I was uh, sleep training eating my daughter to bed. I was staying up all night. I read a Stephen King book, and it was a new book at the time. It was called The Outsider. Mm. I read I read that book in the dark at night, out until the morning, for like five or six straight days. It was just I could not put it down. It was so fun. Um, it was interesting. I anyway so. If you want to say a book I can't put down, that was a good novel I could just could not put down. So, anyway. that's great. Oh, oh that's Harry cool. Potter, I couldn't put those down. Loved them. I never read a single Harry Potter book. You can read all those nerd books, but you can't read Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, they're, so they're both nerdy. What's funny yeah. is your dad got me on this book and this author um, about a religion, right? Uh, and it sparked this huge, like, thirst in my mind for, like, history and religion. Mm. And I've been thinking about going back to class. Like, I looked it up. Northwestern has a religious histories class or a degree that I might uh, go after yeah. just because your yeah. dad gave me a book. So how about that? Because you cool. read about it. You know, in a book. You know what? That's actually going to wrap up. I think pretty well. Episode 20 of the On Family Basis podcast. Again, my name is Jake. I was waiting for Dan to mess that up. I'm Dallas. And I'm Ben. Very nice. All of us are so peaceful. Zen. If you guys are watching on YouTube, we all have our prayer hands going right now. So, again... If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. If you're listening to a podcast, a streaming service, subscribe. Very nice. Putting those bright lights away. <laughs> Thanks. Always, always the ending. It's got to be something. All right. So we're going to wrap, and then we'll be back next week. 
and Wednesday you have a new episode. So why don't you come back and join us either on YouTube or your favorite streaming service. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.